Oh god. That didn't work at all. Oh yeah! It probably helps if you remember to set the Z height. <laughs> oh god. What is Z height? Let's uh let's see what Z height is. Distance program. Zero is... <laughs> oh god. Zero is... very low. It's a lot lower in person, trust me. That means I didn't blow the insert up. Alright, hold on, I'm gonna fix it. You know, really my first indication something was wrong when I found a chip on the center drill. It was fat. <laughs> I think the center drill kind of dragged along the part. Slightly. Look how thick that chip would have been. Drill's still intact, so I must not have touched the drill. Good sign. Inserts have absolutely no wear on them. I know you guys can really see, but I don't think you care that much. And the bottom finish is uh, <laughs> ugly at best. Huh. Yeah, that's uh, that's ugly. So I up the RPM a little bit. And um chip load is now half basically and we're gonna go 70 no 20 thou deeper and the finish speed rate's a little bit slower so I'm thinking with that extra extra 300 rpm plus the slow feed rate should get us a little bit better surface finish because this is the bottom of the uh, pry bars so they need to look good No sparks yet, that's a good sign. 15 inches a minute, 600 RPM. Puts the chip load at... That says 4 thou per tooth, so... Uh, I think I'm gonna live with this finish. It's not glass, and it's like kind of rough, but it's not awful, I guess. Now you know what I'm take another, I'll do another pass on it. Well, while that's doing that pass, I figured you guys might want to see my awesome end mill from the other day. Alright, that's a little bit better. I can't feel it. Well, I kind of can, but it should come out in the stone wash because this is just the bottom, so moving on. All right, let's talk about this tool pad. So I got a new version of this thing. 
There, there she is. Yep, one of them's got a tree on it. That's right. All right, so first we're gonna adapt it with the half inch. Then we're gonna adapt it with the three sixteenth. Then adapt it with the one eighth because it couldn't fit in between the other ones. Contour to clean up the side. Then we're gonna adapt it these holes. Then we're going to surface the front, surface the chamfers. Take a sixteenth ball and mill and chamfer the pocket for the lanyard, trace the tree, and then cut it out with some tabs. So let me load her up. Alright, take our beautiful fixture. Remove the things that are in your way. Bring the table over here. Take a piece of stock with holes in it. Sweet. All right. We're almost there. After waiting 20 minutes for the toolpaths to generate. Good times. Thanks, Fusion. And I made sure to actually do Z height this time, so uh, let's uh, let her rip. Hope everything's tight. Oh wait, I forgot high speed machining. All right, now we're let her rip. Wood trimmer. All right, I'll update you guys in a second. She's just clicking away. I'm liking what I'm hearing so far. Alright, it successfully did that. I think it got a little dull when it was doing the uh, top facing up because it was a full slot. But only like 20 thou depth. But see, it's kind of set to do like high speed machining, so I could imagine that that wasn't that healthy for it. But anyways, on to greater things. Good luck. Just walked back in after basically 45 minutes and it's good to see the thing still cutting. I have like the Haas Connect thing on my phone so like if a tool change doesn't happen or like it checks the tool it'll just error out and shoot me a text. So I wasn't too worried about it and this machine actually causes the lights in my house to flicker so I know every time the spindle ramps up <laughs> so I know it's still running. So it looks like we're halfway through the program, so probably about another 30 minutes. I'll come back out here and check out it's, uh, how it's doing. I like to be here for the cutout, just because it's kind of inconsistent whether the tools properly cut out and fly into each other kind of thing, so we'll see. Things are looking positive. I got here just in time for the cutout. So we'll see if one flies out of the spot, because sometimes if you get the heights wrong at all, it's only a couple of thousand, so usually the uh, sometimes things get a little squirrely. I'm using uh, 10 thou tabs, but like I said, you get the heights wrong, and uh, the tab heights and the bottom heights are a little different, so we'll just have to see and uh, yeah, see how it comes out. But uh, yeah. Full two and a half hours, no stopping. Usually I have to stop, no tool breakage, so pretty pretty dialed, which is good. Yeah, you can break the tool here pretty easy by getting um, like slivers of metal popping up, like actually coming. Oh yeah. There, see, I think that's all broke. <laughs> Alright, it's the next day. 
And let's see, I forget where we left off, but oh yeah, I think the tool broke. So this is so here's one kind of failed. I also don't want to focus on it apparently. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Focus on these ones. So yeah, these look good. There's some interesting marking, but you can't feel them, so they should come off in the stone wash. That one you can kind of feel. But uh, yeah, they look good. They look real good. Now we're going to try to cut out the... Uh, we'll try to do the cutout thing, and I changed a couple settings, so we'll see if that fixes our problem. Or if it just causes me to buy another ammo. Which is likely the case. Alright, ram speed is 10. Did it just break? Oh no, it didn't. It made a super weird noise though. It's really hard to see if it, if it breaks because of how. Oh yeah, that pulled out. Okay, hold on. Let's see if we can pull these two guys out before we do break the tool. Alright, since those two are loose, I'm going to repost and we'll just cut the back too. Back to everything cut yet. Good luck, don't hit the other ones. So I'm telling it to step the basically five thou off the bottom of the part, and then the tabs are now ten thou tall. Almost there. I really need to get a ER-16 holder for this last one because the coolant can't really get in against the cutter there. It just hits the uh, collet nut. Oh boy. Oh, that seemed to have worked pretty good. I wonder why the, the, uh, it's gouged here and not here. All right, so here it is off the mill. That's where it's bolted right there. Nice and soft on the pry end. This is usually where I cut myself really good. See, this is what the back looks like. I must have had some height issues on this one because of the gouging that's happened on the etching. I'll show you a close-up in a second. But the rest of them look like they came out good. The tabs work good. You can see them right here. Here's a tab. Tabs. That one's kind of because of that height problem. All right, let's see what we won. So, fresh off the mill. This one's awesome. Oh, sorry, the camera's like in a weird spot. So I got the sick tree engraved on here with the logo. I've noticed where the tabs are. There's some interesting mill marks. You can see them on camera. Like kind of where the tool gets gouged in there. There's an interesting mark right there. Yeah, it's really interesting the difference between whatever happened here on the bottom. Super strange. 
so you can really see the difference there. Probably has something to do with stock to leave, would be my guess. And here's the rest of them. Engraving came out good on this one. Yep. Kind of weird service on the tip here. Super weird. Weird feeling. So these new versions have much thicker pry ends. And then basically the side is still utility sharp. So yeah, I'm going to clean these up and then uh, might stone wash or heat treat or we'll see they're 4130 so they can be heat treated pretty pretty readily so I'm uh, gonna debate what to do with them but uh, that probably wraps this video up so uh, yeah thanks for watching if you want to see more or you want to buy one I'll leave a link in the description and the next video will probably work on a titanium one because I pretty much have the toolpath kind of down, so, yep. Alright, have a good one.